So hi, how you doing? I'm Justin with Opting Out of Normal, and I am here to discuss with you the typical inverters used in the RVs of today's times. The uh, uh, a little bit of a, a rundown on exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to discuss the, the the two major types of inverters, as far as uh, modified and pure sine wave type inverters. Uh, we're going to figure out or we're going to discuss how to figure out how big of a the uh, based on what you're what you're utilizing. Um, we're going to talk about some of the, the wiring type requirements to get the inverters wired. So, uh, if you have any, please ask them in the in the YouTube chat. Uh, if you want to this later on, put them down in the comments. Uh, let us know if uh, if there's uh, if you've got any other follow on questions. Um, you see me now. <laughs> the uh, um, back in Sedona for or not we're back in Slide. Uh, uh, another system personally. Uh, so. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so I guess the uh, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the, uh, well, actually first, I want to remind you that if, uh, if you are not a subscriber yet and you'd like to be notified of when we are going to be doing these videos live, um, feel free to, to uh, click down below under the, at the subscribe button. If you want to be notified, ring the bell. Uh, tap on that bell to uh, to let them know that you want to find out whenever we're live or we we upload a new video. The so uh, um, so now that that's out of the way. So different types of inverters. You have modified and pure sine wave inverters, and yes, they both convert. 12 volt power from your battery bank and turn it into 110 power so that you can plug in to uh, regular household uh, items such as your computers, uh, your laptops, um, a coffee maker, or a hair dryer, or a, a, a TV system. Um, the uh, most of those items will require a, a 120 volt system, a standard household plug. And without having an inverter in your RV or being plugged into shore power, you're not gonna be able to power them. So uh, the, the difference modify is a computer Oh, I lost my marker already. It is a uh, uh, a signal that is generated. It basically looks like a set of stairs. Yeah. There it is. Sorry, I had to find my pen. A modified sine wave basically along this line is zero volts. Now, in order to Again, I see comments up there, so maybe that's better. 
Hopefully. Did it go? Yep. It says you're alive again. Okay. If it happens again, let's just tell them that if it happens again, I'm going to try to do a Facebook Live or something. Okay. Because this is crazy. So let's try this again. So uh, we talked, I showed you the, the graph about the modified sine wave. Uh, this is a picture of the pure sine wave. As you can see, the, it's curved up and down. So you're actually getting the, uh, the current is actually acting more like standard shore power. So uh, what this does is it enables your electronics to run more or better than they would be actually plugged in. This is the, the kind of curve that the power companies are trying to, uh, trying to establish, trying to get you to do, or trying to, to supply you with. So these, this is your pure sine wave inverter signal. So when you look at the difference between the, 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 uh, the modified and the pure sine wave, Modified inverters will be cheaper. Uh, you'll find them at truck stops. You'll find them uh, box stores. Uh, usually they're, you know, they're a couple hundred bucks um, for big numbers, uh, you know, thousands of watts, but they're a modified sine wave. If you're gonna be doing anything special, uh, charging your laptops, uh, a lot of the uh, the newer technology, the uh, uh, the the uh, the electronics nowadays really like to see the pure sine wave style inverters. They're a little bit pricier. Um, you can get a a brand new uh, pure sine wave inverter. Uh, anywhere from a couple hundred bucks up to a couple thousand. Um, they come in various sizes. Uh, you can get uh, a typical uh, inverter uh, anywhere from uh, 300 watts all the way up to uh, three, four or 5,000 watts. Um, so uh, manufacturers have, they, they make quite a few different options. Um, is it, are we back on? Is anyone else back on yet? Uh, yeah, there's more okay. people watching. Okay. Um, again, uh, if you're just logging in, if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask the questions in the chat or to, uh, to send us a message, uh, if it's after the fact, uh, send us a message on, uh, on Facebook in the DIY solar group. Or, um, uh, uh, or below. Uh, or below. So, so your inverters. Um, the uh, some other things to consider are the uh, some of the other benefits to some of the inverters. The uh, they have inverters now that also replace your charging system in your your rig or in your coach so um they're listed as inverter slash chargers so not only do they draw power out of the battery bank but they also put power they they charge your battery bank uh when they're not drawing power so a lot of you that may become important especially as you start increasing your battery banks the uh, some of the other technology that's important is uh, what they refer to as hybrid inverters and what that allows you to do is take a uh, a, a standard inverter or take the, the the inverter and you can pass through current from or power from a generator or a shore power connection 
feed that through the inverter to the, your circuits that you're feeding. And if the load is increased above the, uh, the generator or the shore power inputs, the inverter will then kick in and also uh, take ba battery power, convert it into 110 and assist your generator. Um, what that allows you to do is get away with using a smaller generator. Um, you have these uh, the smaller hybrid uh, or inverter type generators, such as the Honda EU2000, uh, the Champion 2000s, uh, Yamaha has the, the 2000 watt inverters or the 2000 watt generators. Um, so it allows you to run your coach off of a smaller, more fuel efficient generator. And then if the need arises, you also can back it up with the battery power uh, for those intermittent large loads, such as running a microwave or running a hairdryer or making a pot of coffee. Uh, some of those items may be a little too much for your generator. The uh, so the yeah this this whole issue uh, oh Silverado truck how you doing um, the so with your inverters um, in order to properly size your inverter, what you need to look at is what kind of loads are you running? Um, if you're familiar with our opting out a normal blog, um, I did a blog a couple months back talking about how to properly size uh, your inverters based on, uh, on stuff that you're gonna utilize um, on a regular basis, whether that be a coffee pot or a hairdryer coming up with the total number of watts that you would use at any given time all at once. And that'll allow you to figure out or, you know, to calculate uh, approximately how big of an inverter you're gonna need. Now, most inverters will swing to a, to a degree or they will cover a surge. So you get a, uh, uh, what they call the, the surge value or the, the maximum wattage uh, output. And so uh, a lot of the inverters will, will wire or will uh, talk about their maximum and then, or their, their continuous and then their surge rates. Um, and that's the, the, the difference max or continuous usage. Um, I currently, in my rig, I have a GoPower 2000 watt inverter charger. It is a hybrid inverter. Um, it, uh, it currently will put out a continuous 2000 watts, uh, but it will surge, I wanna say 3900 watts. Don't hold me that, uh, to that number, I can't remember exactly. Um, but uh, it'll surge a lot higher than that um, and it'll it'll allow you to start some of your motor items uh, say you wanted to run uh, a table saw or uh, you know a piece of construction equipment um, it's not quite big enough to run a decent size air compressor well actually I take that back I can run a, a 12 amp pancake air compressor on my inverter setup. That initial surge is covered by the, the, the surge from the inverter and the compressor will start up and run. So basically you need to sit down and figure out, you know, how big of an inverter you're gonna need. Um, I can tell you I live pretty well on a 2000 watt inverter. With that said, um, sometime in the next week, week and a half, I hope to upgrade my system. Um, I'm going to upgrade to a, a larger battery bank and a, a twin inverters from Victron. So uh, we'll let you know how that goes down the line too. 
Um, Why but, are you doing that? Uh, I am doing that. Um, I do have a video um, posted a couple weeks ago talking about the Go Power. Um, I have a dog that we have to, uh, we, we keep in the trailer. Uh, so I need, if we're ever plugged in, I need the ability to ensure that we do maintain current. Um, so uh, we, we prefer to run uh, or at least have the option to run an AC with load assist. And so the load assist setup of the Go Power uh, was not fitting our needs because it only powered up one hotline. So you should go into that and tell you had to contact them. Well, yeah. Well, watch my video. I, I talk about it there. Um, I, I did have to contact Go Power and actually have them uh, give me information about uh, their inverter. Um, okay. Silverado Truck says, uh, do you run a sub panel to break out your circuits? Did I come back yet? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, we're back. Okay, so um, that brings up a, uh, a pretty interesting conversation. Um, I do not run a sub panel and sorry for these issues. We are, uh, we do have a pretty decent signal. We have good up and good down. Um, but sometimes uh, I can't quite figure out I'm doing this on an iPhone. So if anyone's got any tips on, uh, on YouTube live, as far as, uh, a Apple cell phone, uh, I would certainly appreciate it. An iPhone. Um, so, with my situation, um, with my Go Power, um, I do not need to run a sub panel. Um, I did have to move some things in the circuit breaker box. Uh, I had to swap some circuits around so that all of my boondocking circuits were on one hot leg. And what that's allowed me to do is that go power when I'm not connected to the generator or not connected to a shore power, it is inverting to both sides of my circuit breaker. Uh, it is the only one that uh, go power is the only manufacturer at this point that makes a true 50 amp pass through for, uh, for an inverter. So, uh, so I do not have a requirement to have a, uh, a sub panel. Now it brings up a good point because if you deal with, uh, if you're dealing with an inverter, um, and you're trying to figure out how to wire it into your trailer, what you need to do is you need to make sure that uh, if you're going to have it pass through power, and not all inverters do, but if you if your inverter has the ability to pass through power, you do not want to put then the rated capacity of that inverter to pass through the power. Um, some of the older, smaller magnums uh, have 30 amp transfer switches in them. Uh, some of them will say that they can do two. 30 amp hot feeds uh, feeding your panel. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that your transfer switch is capable of passing through that power. Um, okay. okay. So what you could do is they do have the ability or you could have the ability to split your circuit breaker panel um, so that uh, each side or, you know, you're only having to worry about powering one side of your circuit breaker panel. Um, 
question. Oh, there is a question. <laughs> is the 50 amp pass through what gives you the ability to not have a sub panel? Yes, the the Go Power 50 amp pass through actually passes through both legs of uh, of your uh, your 50 amp RV service. Um, for those of you that that are a little unfamiliar, let me explain. I have a whiteboard, so your your typical RV service did ask for a drawing, so when you look into look at a plug, a typical 50 amp service, unfortunately, I don't have a plug with me. Um, but when you look at a 50 amp service line, uh, you will see that there's four connectors. You have a line one, a line two, a neutral, and a ground. Now, for those of you that don't understand or, or haven't messed with a lot of electric, uh, a lot of electricity, um, the uh, some of the things you need to keep in mind uh, is that each one of these lines is capable on a standard 50 amp service is capable of supplying 50 amps or uh, 300 or sorry 600 watts is what each one of each line is capable of putting through so um, so a true RV service is going to provide you with up to 1200 watts or sorry 12,000 watts um, of possible power so uh, each one of these will give you 6,000 watts. The neutral is a, is a, uh, a return line. Basically, your neutral would be um, OK, sorry again. Just hang tight. If it pauses, we're on it. We're watching. So uh, um, so 50 amp service gives you two hot lines, a neutral, and a ground. So the Go Power Inverter has the ability that it'll be able to supply power to both line one and line two, and then you have a connection for your neutral and your ground in the inverter. Um, you have inputs and then you have outputs in the inverter. And so it'll pass through all 50 amp service. Now, if you have 30 amps, uh, a 30 amp service inverter, um, and you install it in line with a 50 amp service, um, what can happen is that uh, you can overload that circuit by providing too many watts going through that line. Um, and it can potentially cause a uh, a fire or definitely damage some components because of the the increase in load passing through. So you definitely want to be aware if you're well it's not spinning anymore Go. so that's a good sign. Okay <laughs> so on my system it does not go through when shore power comes in, I do not have an inverter or a circuit breaker prior to my inverter because when I plug in either a pedestal or a generator, uh, I have a circuit breaker protection at the pedestal or the generator. So I do not have a another circuit breaker in line. Uh, let me know if that didn't answer your question. Um, if... Uh, if you have an issue, or if you're going to install a 30 amp service breaker, um, what I did, or what you can do is, uh, if you want to put in a sub panel, which you should with a 30 amp service, uh, if you want to install a sub panel, what you do is you run.
I'm still spinning. That's it. Here, go. Go. I'm good. Alright, so as you're going. Okay. Whew. Again, if anyone knows of a better way, please send me a message. <laughs> um, we're we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna keep going, but hopefully just bear with me. So so if you're gonna install a 30 amp uh, pass through service inverter, I highly recommend you do install a sub panel, and all you have to do is put in a 30 amp breaker in your in your your standard circuit panel run that power down through your inverter and then from your inverter go up to your sub panel to the circuits that you want to power by the inverter uh, what that's going to do is it's going to limit your your circuits that you can supply but that will ensure that you will safely be able to run your inverter and your shore power going through um, again if you have any questions on that if you have experience, uh, or if you have a little bit of a electrical experience, you just want to learn a little bit more, let me know. Um, the uh, just keep, just keep in mind, in a little bit of a, a disclaimer, I am not a certified electrician. I I am a I I am a CB. I have done. Uh, I've got some experience in this. Um, I know the. Okay, so I'm no longer spinning. <laughs> so, uh, for a 30 amp circuit, basically doing is you are taking out one of those lines, and so now you're having uh, 30 amp service. Uh, normally, you'll see 3,000 watts or upwards of 3,600 watts. Uh, go through that line so you can see the benefit of having 50 amp service versus 30 uh, so just keep that in mind um, again go power is the only one that i know of that has the 50 amp service pass through um, if you uh, uh if you're looking to not have to use a uh a, a sub panel or you do not have the room for a sub panel, a, one of the go power inverters may be your, your best option. However, be aware, uh, go check out my other video on, on and I'll post a link below um, to my other video of dealing with the go power um, when you're talking about the high, well, Question. yeah. When, I will post a, a link to the video. So what you need to look for, uh, I'm a Silverado truck, one of the things that you need to look for when you're looking at your inverter pass-through uh, capabilities is see uh, a lot of them will just So the... Uh, one of the things that it'll, it'll state is that um, it'll have either a 30 amp output or a 30 amp uh, pass through. Those are the ones that you want to make sure of that uh, you do not run 50 amp pass through through those. If you only have a 30 amp trailer, one AC, uh, it's not a big deal. You don't you would not need a sub panel. You can power your whole system. Just be aware of what electronics you can and cannot power. Um, again, with the hybrid technology of being able to boost a generator, uh, it so we'll see if this uh... is going okay. So so it's just something that you need to keep in mind um, when you're when you're looking for it. Like I said, the only ones the power is the only one that does the 50 amp pass through. Um, there uh, there is an option to go and basically do what I'm doing now. Um, I am going with the inverters. Uh, <laughs> 
this is my dog. Uh, I am going through the uh, uh, through the process of upgrading to uh, Victron inverters. They are both 3,000 watt. I'm going to do a pair of 3,000 watt Victron inverters. Uh, the uh, each one of them will be supplying the, its own hot feed a uh, hotline so uh, hopefully that'll be able to give me more power um, and we'll be able to get that uh, set up um, but I do know that there are some some limits to that also that they're currently trying to work through um, they are trying to get to adjust uh, where there's been a, a work for your next live you got to figure this out yes this is crazy so sometime this week what battery does it take sometime this week uh i'll get to that question uh sometime this week i'm going to be doing some lives that uh that may or may not be real important but i'm gonna try to figure out this whole live thing too so um the uh so for uh for my battery bank, the uh, for my GoPower uh, 2000 watt inverter, it requires at least 400 amp hours of a battery bank, um, is what the the manufacturer calls for. I have six six volt uh, batteries hooked up series parallel, so that I have the 12 volts. Uh, that gives me a battery bank of 690 amp hours. A connection? Is that it what just I'm saying? keeps telling me reconnect, like a little cloud thing. Okay. So my battery bank, what I'm going to be going to next, or hopefully in this next week, is I am I am converting over to a lithium battery bank. Um, it's a little pricey. Uh, I definitely, uh, but it's an investment. I live full time in my RV. Um, and I rely on my electrical system, and and I boondock uh, almost a hundred percent of the time. Um, says AGM. The uh, my current batteries are lead acid, uh, and I will be going to uh, or they're just uh, flooded lead acid batteries. Um, I do not have any issues with my battery bank. Um, it is a good battery bank. Uh, I've taken good care of it. It's worked out really well for me. Again, I can live. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it stopped spinning. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Go. There's going to be a lot of pauses here because I'm, <laughs> I, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys are, are, are able to hear, you know, everything that I'm saying. Uh, it's just going to make it confusing if you miss anything. So um, the the cost of the lead acid batteries, the flooded lead acid or AGM, uh, when you break it down and look at the cost of the lithium batteries and the life expectancy of the lithium batteries, um, it's basically going to be a long-term investment for me. And that's the way I look at it. And the money that I'm saving being able to uh, to maintain this lifestyle without having to hook to a pedestal is a ton. Currently, excuse me, and currently for the year, I am sitting at $48 for campground fees. Um, the, uh, I think that's a, a pretty good number. Um, and that's this whole year. So, uh, uh, my monthly, where it shows it. Does it say live again? It always says live. It's just that the counter's not going. So I wait for the counter to go. Go. Okay. So the, uh, my system, uh, uh, the, what I'm going to is I'm going to six, lithium uh, 100 amp hour battle born batteries. I'm going with a two uh, Victron inverter, uh, 3000 watt hybrid inverters. 
And then I am going to go with the, uh, the color control for the inverters. So I will be able to monitor my stuff. Um, so I will let you know how that project goes. Uh, I'm gonna start, uh, my batteries are supposed to be here tomorrow and my inverters should be here by the end of the week. So I will let you know how that goes. Um, some other things to, to, uh, to keep in mind when you're talking about your inverters. Um, when you go to hook up your inverters, some of the, the items that you're going to need uh, that people don't generally think about. You definitely want to install some semblance of a shutoff switch for the batteries. Uh, this typical blue C, this one's rated. Uh, it is a... Okay, so this is all you really need. Uh, this is going to allow you to interrupt power from your battery bank to the uh, inverter so that if something happens, you need to work on the inverter or during the hookup process when you're connecting wires, you, you aren't actually making the full connection until you turn this switch to on. Very important, you should have one for each of your, inver each of your inverters if you have multiple. Um, uh, definitely a, a, a key point to have. Oh, I'll spin it again. Okay, one of the other things that you're going to need is a snooze block. Um, I happen to have these again. Uh, Blue Sea Systems is a is a good product coming from the marine industry. Uh, they've been around for a little while. The uh, uh, their uh, a lot of their products pretty good quality products. Uh, we will put the links for for these two items below. Um, this has uh, one of the things I like about this. If I can get the lid off, there we go. It's got pretty solid connection as far as the uh, uh, the bars go for the fuse. The other part of this is a proper sized T fuse. Um, this happens to be 400 amps, which is what I'm going to be needing for my uh, 3000 watt inverters. So uh, I have two of these to replace the, uh, the 300 amp fuse that I currently have. So this will allow me to uh, ensure that uh, basically it protects the wire going to the inverters um, because the, the wire being a heavy duty gauge, um, if you were to short it out, uh, this fuse would blow before you damage any of your uh, electronics. What solar will you use for the number four? For... At least it's all one video now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, again, I will definitely include links down in the description below. It's going to take, after we're done the live, uh, it's going to take me a little bit to, uh, to go and put all the links. Um, we, we do have uh, an Amazon affiliate. So uh, if you are going to purchase any of this stuff, you know, we, we definitely appreciate you clicking through our links to, uh, uh, to, to go to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to those links. Uh, it doesn't cost you guys anything um, and it helps us uh, hopefully come up with a better system for our live. <laughs> um, why dual inverters? The, the reason why I'm going dual inverters is so that um, I have a, it's going to allow me to have a little more control over the hybrid technology um, so that I can feed both of my AC, uh, my AC lines, my hot lines coming in. Um, for those of you that have watched my, my video dealing with the go power, we were in a situation a couple months ago where, uh, we were down in Texas working on a movie, um, at which I'll also post a link down below. Um, the, uh, we were down there working on a movie. It was up hundred degree plus weather. 
we were trying to run the air conditioner off of a 20 amp service line. And I discovered some quirks with my grill power at that point um, that had me a little concerned. Um, it, it wasn't quite doing what I needed it to do. So uh, going with the dual inverters, I hope to have a little more control. Did you answer um, Mark's question? What solar will you use for the ripple floor? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the solar that I'm, I currently have, I'm not changing anything on my current system that I have. Uh, I currently have 1400 Watts of high tech panels, uh, up on the roof. Uh, you can actually get those from continuous resources. Uh, I will include a link to that. Uh, also the, um, I have the 175 Watt panels. Uh, they do make the 200 watt panels, so uh, they are definitely coming down in price. Um, I highly recommend the panels. They are great. Um, they have been working flawless since we put them up. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, for the panels, we do not have an affiliate link. Um, so, so that's, you know, uh, that's going to be another link in itself so um for the again key fuses really important in order to uh to make sure that you are question is are you running the panels in series yes. parallel that... uh, i am running my panels series Sorry. parallel i just don't get it Okay, um, I am running my panels series parallel. Um, the uh, I have an outback charge controller that I'm not changing out. Um, that the charge controller has been working out perfect for me. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, the uh, so I'm not going to any of that. Um, so. We're going to get a little more in depth into solar panels um, in two weeks. That's uh, that's going to be the third topic. Um, come back, you know, in, in two weeks, I forget what the date is, um, but it's listed on my uh, on the, the, the solar page on the, the solar group. Um, we're going to get a little more in depth in the solar charge controllers and talking about the solar panels themselves. Um, so uh, if you have any questions now, feel free to ask. I will I will talk about it, or you know we can discuss it. It is the 30th of July, is the the next live, and we'll talk about it there. Mark uh, wants to know how many amps, uh, how many amp is the inverter is going to pull when max out? The the amperage for the 3,000 watt inverters. Um, I'm trying to remember. I actually read it. It's like 220 something maxed out um, per inverter. Now, the odds of me maxing out both inverters at the same time, pretty slim to none. However, the Battleborn lithium batteries, batteries um, they're rated for 100 amp continuous output. Uh, The, uh, yeah, I see it. Uh, the, uh, the, the inverters, uh, wait, no. Oh, the batteries are rated at 100 amp hour continuous uh, output with a 200 amp surge per battery. And I am going with a bank of six. So that gives me 600 amp hour or 600 amp possibility and a surge of 12. So... Uh, I think I have plenty of battery power um, to, to go through. Um, the In order to come up with a catastrophic fuse size, uh, Stephen asks, um, this is based on the, uh, the number of watts that my inverter is, and the gauge wire um, is rated at, uh, it's recommending 400, uh, 400 amp uh, T fuses. 
the uh, my Battleborn, or sorry, my Go Power inverter now, 2,000 watt inverter, uh, only requires 300 amps currently. So, um, depending on size wire that you use, the length of wire um, between your battery bank and your inverter, um, all of those come into play. Um, a lot of it's based on manufacturer's recommendation. So, uh, Victron recommends the 400 amp fuses. Um, I could go down a list, but the best bet, uh, the, the, the best thing that you need to do is uh, look at your look at your owner's manuals um, and all the manufacturers have the owner's manuals available for you for nothing um, so that you can figure out what you need beforehand. Uh, they, they all list the, the T fuse size, um, all of that. So uh, they make it, you know, as simple as they can for, um, we're at an hour now. Oh, we're at an hour. Yeah. Okay. So, are so with that, um, I think I covered everything that I was going to cover. Um, the, uh, let me just double check. I know we talked about, uh, the, the types of inverters. We talked about the hybrid technology, which is, is definitely, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's definitely something pretty important. Um, it, very useful, uh, as long as you, uh, you get the right, uh, uh, as long as you're dealing with, you know, within your, your, We won't delete the video. Okay. I won't delete the video. Mark says the video oh. need links. No, no, I, I definitely won't. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sure that I'm, I'm not missing anything on uh, uh, the RV Solar DIY page uh, as far as what is going or what we promised or what I promised we were going to talk about. Um, uh, have, oh, uh, we talked a little bit about sub panels, a uh, big thing, 30 amps. Uh, if you're talking about 30 amp pass through, trying to pass 50 amp through it, bad. You're going to need a, a sub panel. Um, the, uh, uh, how big is too big when connecting DC wires? Um, again, you got to go with the manufacturer's specifications. Uh, Battleborn recommends that all of their battery interconnects, the, the little sections of battery that go in between the, uh, the, the batteries, uh, their recommendation is, is one aught. Um, the batteries going from the, uh, from the battery bank to the inverter, their recommendations is two aught. Anything more than that, uh, anything more than the recommendations, could potentially become difficult to work with. Um, so um, that's the, the biggest inhibitor. Um, I've, if you saw some of my pictures where we installed 12 Battleborn batteries into a fairly small compartment on an RV, if we would have gone any bigger than the two gauge that we went with, uh, it would have been pretty difficult um, to say the least. So, um, there is, you know, you can potentially go big, too big, but again, it's based on manufacturer's recommendations of your inverter. You want to make sure that if you're traveling long distances and when you calculate your distance, it's round trip from your battery bank through all of your switches and fuses into your inverter and then all the way back again to include going through any kind of shunt that you go through. Um, uh, all of that go is calculated is calculated in